What's good as a hobby but terrible as a profession? Baking. I love to make bread and cakes, but on my time, I couldn't imagine having to wake up at 3am every day to start making bread. I love to cook and bake. Friends have asked me many times why I won't do it as a profession. I firmly believe if I had to do as a job I'd end up hating it, and I never want to be in that position. Hobbyist collecting. I've known two people who grew up loving comic books, so they opened their own comic book stores as adults. It's not just that 90 plus percent of comic shops tend to go under for lack of business, although that's certainly true. The other reality is that the customers are, if possible, even more demanding, opinionated, and rude than customers in other retail stores. The problem with opening a business related to what you know and are passionate about is that while most people are subject matter experts on that passion, they don't know jack about running a business or marketing. Cooking maybe? I love to cook, but after doing it for work, cooking stuff I don't even like making. For 12 hours a day, I get home and make myself microwave ramen. I get so burnt out on cooking. Crochet and knitting. I'm constantly being told you should have a business doing that, but nobody will be willing to pay for my time. They'd only be willing to pay for materials if I'm lucky. For example, a double bed size blanket and a relatively simple stitch would take me 170-200 hours. Basic yarn approximately 40 pounds to 60 pounds. I'd be lucky if the customer would pay 50 pounds to 80 pounds. It's the same for a lot of handcrafts. I was literally jaw on the floor the other day when I saw designer crochet halter top being sold for 600 pounds. I'd be super lucky if I got 15 pounds to 20 pounds. Whoa, woke up to all this. Thank you for your upvotes, and thank you kind strangers for my first awards. This, my family always says I should sell what I make but when I tell them I wouldn't take less than $30 for a hat they think I'm a nut, but this stuff takes time. Bowling. Unless you're good enough to be in the top 20 in the world, the top earner in all of 2020 made $293k from the PBA tour, the 10th highest earner made $71k, only 16 made more than $50k, from there it just keep dropping to where the number 50 earner only made about $10k, you also have to pay for each tournament you enter, if 300 bowlers show up for a tournament you need to finish roughly in the top 100 to even make your money back. It's just too hard to go all in on. Most pro bowlers either run pro shops or give lessons when they can. From a documentary I saw, it is my understanding that many bowlers supplement their income with a bit of hustling. It's called Kingpin, worth checking out. Dancing. Most dancers get paid crap. They break their bodies throughout their lives, and have to retire very young in most cases. I'm a composer and I don't really see my music doing money, and there are two reasons for that. One, the music industry is very large and I see that a large number of artists and groups are competing for a small place on the top. Everything seems unpredictable, too many variables, too many possibilities, and I don't feel like risking my chances at it. Two, my style simply isn't mainstream. For now, I'll just keep learning and doing it as a hobby and maybe I'll please some people one day. I know a lot of professional working musicians and I've always thought music is a great side gig but brutal for a full time job. What I have learned is work is work and you always have to hustle. Sure it's great playing with Nelly when he's in town but playing the background music for a diarrhea medication commercial is better because you get a check every month. Building computers. Used to be a great hobby for me back in the day, but once you work in a place that troubleshoot and maintain them, you get tired of the constant monotony for speccing out the layout and hardware, software install and updating, making sure connections are seated properly, etc. To call the fun and wander away. Man, why you ruining it for me? That's what I wanted to do for a job. Writing. For some people it works out, but most things are never popular and not usually anything enough to support yourself. Photography. Sort of. Once it becomes your job it really quickly loses a lot of its charm and the customers can be very very annoying at times, although I do admit sometimes it is freaking fantastic as well. It does depend on the subject though, I suppose. I'm surprised this one is so far down. 
I've given it a shot and it definitely sucks all the fun out. It goes from 100% shooting and editing to 10% shooting, 30% editing, 20% endless self-promotion and the rest scheduling, haggling with clients, and other administrative stuff. Two, this is relevant after this past weekend. Coaching, or generally working within, youth sports. I have a million horror stories I could tell. Most centering around parents adults. Only train one night a week now, and have limited my services to purely training teams, versus some of the admin or multi-night roles I've held in years past. Nightmare fuel. Had to reduce to a pure training capacity because the more I interacted with adults around sports, especially already having a full-time job, the more I'd just be bummed out whole weekends at a time. Agree. I used to coach HS girls volleyball. I love the sport. I love coaching. But the parents, and even some of the kids, made it suck. Plus, with the hours involved, I ended up making less than minimum wage. I think most hobbies are terrible as professions. I'm a home brewer, and jobs in breweries seem pretty stressful with long days to meet market demands, without a great pay. Very true that most hobbies suck as professions. Building custom motorbikes and hot rods. Someone asked me why I don't do this for a living since I'm so passionate about them. I answered that it would turn a relaxed hobby into stressful work with budgets and deadlines and the kind of piety I plan and build them with. Only Jeff Bezos could afford one if I plan to actually pay myself a decent hourly wage. Anything directly relating to entertainment. That includes making music, movies, video games, sports, whatever. If it's anything that tons of people have a passion for because it's fun, that's going to translate into people wanting to make a living out of it, and thus the market will be very crowded and competitive. Worked for a few major professional sports franchises, it's really not all it's cracked up to be. Long hours and there's a long line to get in so you're easily replaceable. Found a new job that pays better and has better work-life balance. Filmmaking. I spent about 7 years trying to work my way into the filmmaking industry. It was very fun at first but I have found, at least in California the industry is filled with scumbags that would sell their own mother to make some quick cash. I figured eventually I would get to meet the real artists that are passionate about what they make. Turns out that's just how the industry is. I also at some point realized I was no longer in it for the right reasons and I was starting to become a scumbag myself. Now I work in IT and make home movies with friends for fun and I am much happier. I wanted to get into directing until I was an actor in an independent film and I realized it was 20 hours a day for 1 minute of footage and the only fun anyone had in the production was sitting in a makeup chair. Home improvement. As a hobby you can take your time, do research, spread the cost, and do it right. As a profession, it's feast or famine. You are competing with every dong head with a pickup and bids can be all over the place. You never know what you are going to bite into when you start a demo. Does this bathroom have one layer of wallboard or four? Is there rot under this dishwasher? You want to give the best product to the customer, but the good enough meter is all over the place. I feel MMA is it's fun to train and learn but unless you make it to the upper echelon you're fighting for pennies. Same with kickboxing and boxing. I had a sparring partner his first pro fight he took a flying knee that split his wig. He made like 100 bucks and was in the hole for like 60k. Made me give up on any professional aspirations. Digital drawing. I enjoy it as stress relief. And at least right now while I'm still kinda learning my style and discovering different techniques methods. I don't think I'd do well under deadlines or stressing about client preferences demands. Not to mention all the art stealing that happens online. I just like doodling fan art and OCS for my own enjoyment and posting them if I feel good about it. Ironically, I am sort of working on a comic as a passion project, but I don't really want to hit it big or make it a career. I just want to tell my story, you know? I am a digital animator. I used to be able to do a full Inktober for fun but since I started working I don't really feel like even opening my drawing program to have some fun. I do feel sometimes like I'd like to draw something but can't get myself to touch my tablet without feeling like I'm wasting my free time doing my job lol. Science. No matter the field, science is awesome. 
but holy heck is academia flawed, in every country, it basically burns through researchers, people are underpaid and overworked, they are exploited as much as possible, if they got paid any less or made to work any more, the system would collapse. I would generalize this to being a professional researcher in any field sucks in terms of monetary compensation. As you pointed out, the way academia is run is fundamentally broken and tenure tracks are becoming only rarer. Illustration. You can end up making pretty awesome stuff, but P pays so dang well you'll be surely tempted to try it, and some artists just end up making only P or furry P, because you can charge double or triple just because it's NSW. For the confidentiality part 2, sometimes they end up being tired of their job in a few years because, who wouldn't be affected by drawing dongs every day? Reef keeping. Chemistry application that goes well beyond a typical hobby. You are essentially replicating an ocean in a few gallons of water in your living room. As a profession you are dealing with creatures that shouldn't be removed from their ecosystems but you need to sell them to what will be more than likely their quick doom. If the creatures somehow beat all odds from collection to transport to adaptation and adjustment to being housed within a few gallons of water, they need to survive long enough to make the store money. These creatures then need to contend with how lazy an average reef keeper might become a few months into the hobby. It's a terrible boostness but impressive hobby. Marine biology as a rule it's not a great idea to go into a profession that isn't producing a commodity that can be sold easily, requires multiple postdocs to be competitive and generally most people would do for free, therefore it is a very competitive field that doesn't pay well. This is true for anything wildlife related. Wildlife management, biology, ecology, science, natural resource sciences, parks, wildlands recreation, forestry. Lots of young people are interested in those kinds of jobs. But there's no demand, no private sector, and nepotism and cronyism are widespread. Game tester. It's fun to play video games all day, but as a tester you won't be playing. You will spend the entire day banging a rock with various weapons to see if they are bugged. Fishing. I love fishing. Going out whenever I want, in weather that is pretty much perfect, catching as many fish as I want with friends, having a nice uber fresh fish dinner. It is such a nice day, but, as an occupation, commercial fishing sucks. Dangerous. Dirty. Poor pay. Cold. Seasickness. Injury. Stinky it goes on and on. If you are a fishing guide it is not a lot better. I remember one morning, it was just before 7am, I was launching my boat at a ramp in the eastern shore of Virginia. It was a magnificent morning. Beautiful sky, cool morning light breeze and birds feeding everywhere. I had my son and daughter with me and we were really happy and excited. There was guy launching his boat at the same time. He was obviously a professional guide. We started talking and he said that he was jealous of me, that he could see the joy I had in going out and that he was remembering what it was like to go out fishing just for the fun of it. He said he was in his fifth year of being a guide and was quite successful, but it was his job and it felt like a job. The joy was gone. I can't believe I had to scroll this far down to find the most obvious and true answer. Commercial fishing is terrible hard and inconvenient work while it is a great fun and relaxing hobby restoring or working on cars it is a good time when it's your time and something you find interesting my dad has been in body work for about 40 years he has built racing motors alcohol tuned race cars and restored god knows how many cars what started as something he loved he now despises his joints are shot his health will eventually deteriorate due to all the chemicals and he is exhausted he can't stand the thought of even having another muscle car. I took his advice when I was younger and avoided auto as a profession. I dabble in it and work around it. I enjoy it, but not directly involved. There's my two cents. Any form of athlete would be hard I think. At the highest level constantly worrying about performance. One injury being career ending or a form slump being potentially career ending must just be perma stress. There's so much random crap not associated with your direct job which would suck the fun out of it I would imagine. Fitness. My buddy is a trainer and he's ripped. 
His clients are mostly obese people in their 40s and 50s with money who like the idea of having a trainer but lack the discipline to get fit. They think some trainer is going to fix their 30 years of poor habits and crappy diets in one program with no effort. It doesn't work that way. They they fire him because they don't see results. LOL. Animation. It's already a nightmare and monotonous as a hobby, but since you can do it on your own terms and make whatever you want it all ends up beautiful and worth it, but as a job, oh god, get ready for inhumane work hours and demands, animating things you don't even care about while trying to replicate someone else's style and working with a dozen more animators. Plus even after all that there's a huge chance no one will even see it, not Everton can work for big box studios and projects. Even if you do however, there's usually so many animators working on a single movie or show that you'll likely be cleaning other people's animations or animate an entire 3 seconds of whatever you're working on. So you can't even point to the project you worked on and say I animated that because it's more like I animated that 3 seconds, and that 3 seconds, and that 3 seconds, and that. The animation industry is a nightmare. Being a mechanic. The money you save being able to fix your own crap is serious. Thousands. However, even as a hobbyist, amount of people that want you to fix their car, usually for as close to free as they can get, is kinda awful. Especially when people you otherwise like, don't want to listen to you about the importance of maintenance, or learning what the lights on their dash mean. When you work professionally, in a shop, you see the dark depth of the idiocy of the common person who doesn't bother to learn a frick of anything about owning, forget maintaining the one-ton death. Box they careen themselves about in at high speeds. The kinds of things you see coming, that could kill themselves or someone else, is definitely damaging to your faith in humanity. My friend is a mechanic and we as a group have a policy. Mates rates is not he does it for cheap. Mates rates is he does it for full price and we buy him pizza. Art. I've been an artist my whole life. Any medium. As for me personally, I think that having a job involving drawing or art would absolutely kill my love for it because my favorite thing about art is that I can do whatever I want. I am a 3D artist, growing up with the thought of, well, if they can't deal with my schedule and I can't deliver the commissions whenever I want with a mountain of money I ask then f you. Over the years I learned to be a professional artist that able to take brief execute and deliver on the time agreed. I still enjoy my hobby job so much. Staring into the blank abyss for hours on end, thinking about why Ariel didn't just write down what she wanted to say when she lost her voice. Being a YouTuber, you must output a video on schedule, edit and come up with good content. Sure it's fun when you do it at your own pace but once you have a schedule, it feels more like a chore. Writing. Most people get into it under the impression they'll strike it rich, like JK Rowling or Stephen King. They dunning Kruger themselves into the delusion that any book they write will be an automatic bestseller. In reality, the market is saturated and even Rowling and King couldn't duplicate their own success when they tried a second time under pseudonyms. My own sister has four young adult novels out, and she's never hit any kind of bestseller list. She did the math on her first book. Dividing the advance she received by the amount of time she spent writing it. It worked out to 18 cents an hour. It worked out to 18 cents an hour. Yep, the pay for authors has fallen through the floor in the past few decades. And it wasn't that great to begin with. I'm working on a novel set in the Cthulhu Mythos. And I don't expect to make any money worth my time on it. It's more of an art project and personal hobby. Since I'm fine financially with my day job. Hair dressing. It's fun to play around styling hair with your friends but after 10 years of constantly standing, dealing with the gross sides of humanity and the absolute lack of hygiene and manners the general public have, it really kills any funness and magic you got as a teen mucking around with straightening irons and box dyes. Not to mention the contacts dermatitis and eczema you get from being in the field long term. My hands look like the dry, desiccated, ancient remains of Boris Karloff's mummy. There is no glamour to a hairdresser's life. Visual effects. 
Making cool crap that doesn't exist and bringing it to life is fun and it's easier to do every year but the professional industry is a cluster frick filled with constant overtime, mostly unpaid if you live in the UK, low pay and a lack of job security. Most end up quitting the industry after 5-10 years because it's just not financially viable once the I work on cool movies that make billions dies off. The ones with technical skill like FXTDs. They do all the big pyro explosions and water sims etc. Could easily transfer to a programming job with their knowledge of Python and C++ and make three times as much. The whole industry is a spiral of underbidding each other to get more work even if it's at a loss. There's always one of the big companies going bankrupt every five years and another taking its place. Any attempts at a unionization are squashed with the fear of being put on the blacklist that all recruiters use and sadly the best chance of that happening was during the pandemic when even the seniors who are too cozy were losing their jobs but, alas that never came to be and we are back to the same level of clusterfuckery we've been in for the past 15 plus years. Gardening. I can handle a few plants, but having to produce enough to make a living, and having my income determined by weather conditions doesn't sound fun. I used to build show car stereo systems, fiberglass trunks, custom doors, neon lights, plexi windows, all that fun stuff. Doing it as a hobby is great. Take your time, plot it out, make it great, show it off, maybe even win some awards or get into some magazines. Takes me months to do a build. Doing it as a job is horrible. You get a few days to do the entire build, because everyone expects you to work like the TV shows. The customer plots it out, so, it's never ideal. Then, you don't even get to show it off. It just disappears and you start the next one. It might get buried but, fossil hunting. So, you and your family friends go into some yucky creek. It's clean enough to walk in, but don't drink it. And you dig in the water and sift through what you dig up and bam. Megalodon teeth. Fossil horse teeth. All sorts of cool crap. You take it home. Put it on display. Sell it and make a little bit of money. Or you spend years in school to get a degree in paleontology and make almost no money digging for fossils you don't even get to keep. Where is the fun in that? Being a Twitch streamer. Outside of the top 50 or so streamers. You have to constantly play the single most popular game and only that game. Day in and day out for most of the day to even have a chance to make any meaningful amounts of money. So basically, eat, sleep, crap, warzone Fortnite, then do it all over again. Woodworking. The only practical applications are to be a cabinet maker or carpenter, which both involve heavy lifting. I've got a bum knee and bad back at 23 because I did both in my late teens and early 20s. Being a commissioned artist, I really like drawing but only if I feel inspired. Apart from that being forced to make any form of art is a torture. It would always look so off and the only thing I would feel is that I could fix something. Writing. I have been told so many times that I am a brilliant writer, but unless you're JK Rowling or Stephen King you can't keep a roof over your head by writing. Flying, I would assume. Imagine the longest flight of your life but instead of watching movies, listening to music, reading, and sleeping you can't do any of those things and you can't even space out. Even with a co-pilot doing half the work I can't imagine piloting an airplane from America to Australia without crashing into the ocean out of boredom. I know a lot of pilots and they definitely spend most of the time on long flights chatting, listening to music, and napping. In a two-pilot operation, only one of them needs to pay any sort of attention once autopilot is on in cruise, and it's not really all that much attention that needs to be paid. Computer science. Used to be obsessed with learning everything there is to know. Now I'm just sad all the time and wish I could get away from computers forever. Sewing tailoring. My friend majored in fashion in college. She absolutely adored doing it until she took an internship at Vera Wang's flagship store. That experience nearly broke her. She took a break from it for a few years and thankfully is back working as a costume designer on Broadway and absolutely loving it. Now this one is debatable though YouTube. If you get good, it is really good as a profession and pays a lot of cash but if you aren't really good or screwed. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.